What's going on guys and gals? Welcome back to your Lake Fort Guide. Got another episode of the Guides Network today. Got my boy Ronnie Smelly Kelly. Smelly. AKA the East Texas Hammer. This dude right here can catch him in a lot of ways. He's got a lot of time on the water. One of his favorite ways to do it is what he's doing right now in this backwater area in the fall. And that's going to be a frog. Ronnie, you catch him in the fall on frog at all, bud? Yeah, dude. The deal is, anytime the fish are up shallow and you've got flooded cover, it's time for a frog. <laughs> it's time for a frog. And the water's over about 55. Ronnie has done a frog video on this channel before, but it has been a long time ago, a couple years ago at this point. And Ronnie is absolutely the best hammer I know with a frog in his hands. So today, we're going to have Mr. Ronnie Kelly talk to you about fall frogging. So we're going to talk about frog fishing guys, it's probably one of my, nah, I'm not going to say it's my favorite way to fish, but it's something that I've, I've become pretty efficient at just based on where I live. You know, Lake Fork, Lake of the Pines, Lake Palestine, Lake Tyler, all these East Texas lakes that I've grown up fishing are just prime for frog fishing. You know, we've got a lot of vegetation, we've got stuff in the water, we've got buck brush, we've got willows, stuff like that are just prime. Lily pads. Um, any kind of grass. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what gear I use and what frogs that I like to use. So on the gear, I throw this this particular rod right here and it's not actually the rod that I, I it's not the same as all of my other rods. This is kind of a special rod to me. This is a, a, a falcon rod and basically what this is, this is a 7.4 heavy action rod but it's got a little bit of a parabolic bend to it. And so you know what I'm what I'm looking for is something with enough tip that gives me the ability to take my frog and put it in these small pinpoint places where I can make perfect casts. You know, I'm gonna skip it a lot, I'm gonna glide it a lot, might even pitch it, but it's all about the tip of the rod at, you know, it's all about the tip of the rod, having the ability to get that frog to load up and sling it and give a soft, quiet presentation when you're casting, as well as allowing the fish to get the frog all the way in their mouth before the tension starts to hit the bait and you start to really pull into them. Let's talk about the reel I use. Now, I think it's really important to use a high speed reel. And the reason that I think that is because you're throwing your bait towards the bank most of the time when you're throwing a frog. And so the fish only have one way to go and that's right at you. So you have to take up a lot of line. Um, I'm gonna throw a seven to one reel. You know, that, that gear ratio, it's, it's picking up 27, 28 inches of line per handle turn. It allows me to pick up all the slack in the line before I set the hook. And when that fish makes its run right at the boat, I can keep up with him. We've got three frogs here, and these aren't the only three frogs that I throw, but these are three of my favorite colors. I throw this little yellow belly with the with the black spots and stuff, and so one thing that I tell people, don't worry about the top of the frog. You're kind of looking at the bottom. This is all they see, and so this is something I like to throw when the shad are really active and I'm throwing around um, uh, stuff like you see out here in the background, flooded stuff, and the water's a little bit dingy, and I want a little bit more color. High skies, this is a really good bait. Um, the other color I call cowboy, and everybody knows about cowboy, and this is one of my favorite colors. And the reason is, is it's got purple in it. And anybody that's a hardcore bass fisherman understands that bass and, and most predator fish are, are really attracted to blue and purple and those sort of, sort of colors. They show up really well. Traditionally, they're just really popular colors. And this is this is a great, to me, it's a great bluegill presentation because of this. The bass are watching these legs stay down, you know. What, I, what my theory is on bass is I don't think that they're looking at this going, ooh, there's a frog I'm gonna eat. They're looking at it and they see something on the surface and they know that that's something they eat. And they start seeing the colors that resemble a bluegill and that's what I think entices the strike a lot. Black's another color. And basically what, what I'm doing with black is I'm trying to paint a really good silhouette. And I'll throw this a lot on high skies and in dirty water. Um, I don't have the color with me, but I throw white, especially early in the spring, in the fall when the shad are really starting to move. That white is just unbelievable color. Let's talk about what I do when I get the frog out of the box. Now, nowadays, most of the frogs, especially your spros and your striking frogs, are coming out with the legs trimmed just a little bit. 
And what I like to do is I like to take scissors, and I don't have any laying right here, but I'll trim the leg, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch off of one leg. And basically what that does is it gives it a little bit of an off balance when it's walking. The second thing I do, and to me, this is the most important thing on a frog. If I'm in an area that's extremely, extremely heavy cover, a lot of slop, um, something that my hooks are gonna pick up a lot, I won't bend them out as much, but I'm always gonna bend the hooks out. And I wanna show you guys the, the, the proper way to bend these hooks out. So this is the way that the frogs come straight out of the box. And you'll notice that the hooks point straight into the body, okay? And so when that fish bites, the hook's sitting right there. Now there's a great opportunity for you to catch the fish but what I like to do is I come right on the back, making sure that my pliers aren't gonna mess with the tip of this hook, because I need this thing to be as sharp as I can get it. I'm gonna grab it right here, and I'm gonna grab the shank of the hook, which is inside of the body, okay? And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend it outwards just a little bit, just like that. You guys, I'm gonna do a little bit more here. That didn't bend. These hooks are pretty stout. And if you'll notice, from, one, from this hook buried into the body and this hook sticking out, and that's the way I want my hooks. So I'll bend both of them out just like that. Now, I'm also gonna always throw my frogs on braid. I throw 65 pound braid. Um, the only reason I throw 65 is because 50 just doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm gonna throw 65 pound braid and I'm gonna tie a palomar knot. It, you know, it's, it's really hard to be able to make these long casts that you need in the slop and generally you're not throwing a frog in open water. I mean, people do, but it's just not something that you see a lot of because there's other, there's other baits that work better, walking baits, you know, hard plastic um, popping baits. So most of the time we're in, we're in really heavy cover. And so you're making those long casts with the braid and you have the ability to set the hook and get that hook buried up. And so people will, people will mess around with this. And I hear a lot of people saying, hey man, you know, can't I get away with 20 or 25 pound fluorocarbon line? And you know, maybe you could, the, the problem with fluorocarbon line is the fluorocarbon line sinks and braid tends to float a little bit more and so it allows this bait to work a little bit better as well as picking up all the slack and, and the no stretch and braid to me is probably the most crucial thing you know a lot of people like i said will throw the 20 25 pound fluoro and it's just not practical monofilament has just got too much stretch you know you're, you're throwing seven four seven five seven six eight foot heavy action rods and you're throwing this in slop and buck brush and willows and stuff like that and so you got to have something that's going to get that hook buried up and pull the fish out and so braids braids the only way to go on the frog so we're going to break down some of the areas when i go into an area let's say i'm in a flooded pocket and, and which i'm in right now and you look and everything kind of looks the same what I'm gonna key in on is trying to find grass that has different grass. You know, if I'm going along and I see some dollar weeds and then some gator grass mixed in, that's gonna be a key area. Anytime I see any points in visible grass or, or buck brush or an opportunity for me to put the bait up under something, those are gonna be the prime areas. If I get a bite on a frog, I'm gonna make sure I put my power poles down and I'm gonna make two or three more casts right there before moving on, you know. A lot of times in this grass, there's something that we're not seeing. Maybe it's a point, maybe it's a little bit of a sharper break in the grass, something like that that you and I might not see because it's underwater, but the bass are relating to it. And more than likely, there's gonna be more than one fish there. Okay, now I'll do what you were doing a minute ago. You're gonna get up here. So I'm going to get on the front deck of this boat and I'm going to make a few casts to show you guys the retrieves I like to use. You know, when you're throwing a frog, distance is not near as important as accuracy. So that's why I use this rod that's got all the tip in it, you know. I want to make a soft, subtle cast if I can. Making a splash isn't really what I want to do. Can you see it that far out? Yeah. So there's a couple different retrieves. If I see, if I see bait fish really getting active and I want to turn the bait around, I'm going to make these big pops like this. And, and kind of the key to that is take your line, get it tight, and pull it back about a foot, and then start to fish it. And basically all you're doing is twitching the slack out of your rod. So one of the most popular ways to throw a topwater bait is called walking the dog. And basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a steady twitch with your rod. And again, guys, it's real important to not twitch the bait, but to twitch the slack. If you watch my rod, I'm gonna make small little jerks, just like this. And my bait's gonna go back and forth and back and forth. Oh, I'm looking down, boy. You got 
bro. Let's say you're gonna catch that fish and just beat your frog. That's a pretty good one. Standard issue in here, ain't it? That's all we're catching today, boy. Standard issue. As y'all can see, I ain't kidding about old yellow belly right there now. They like old yellow belly, huh, Pat? I gave it all up for you guys. That's a good fish. Told you, told you not to give me that frog, boy. <laughs> well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Ronnie, thank you. For hey, man, that, my pleasure, dude. I appreciate you having me on here to talk about a frog again. You know, something I love to do, man. I uh, We throw it a lot, you know, because of where I live and where you live. But, yeah. man, it's just freaking fun, dude. You watch them eat it. You catch a lot of big fish, man. It's just uh, I don't know anybody that that's not one of their top favorite yeah, ways to catch the them. It's so visual, it's so violent at times. You can throw but, it everywhere. Yeah. You can dock fish with it. It skips. You can. I mean, there's just so many things you can do with it. Yeah. Fall fishing with the frog, though, it's all about that bait. You find it's that bait, bait yeah. flickering on the surface, on the edges of this flooded stuff, and you can usually get them to eat a frog, like you're talking about. Yeah, dude. I mean, you know, spring's one of the the, the best times to throw a frog in the summer and stuff like that. Let's talk about something else. You know, guys, I want to make. You know, here, here's a here's a big misconception among fishermen is when the sun's out, they don't bite topwater. I mean, it couldn't be further from the truth because it paints the best silhouette and it also puts the fish in the cover. You know, when it's cloudy, they like to come up and they like to blow up and stuff Rome, like that. Roam, they chase, yeah. But they're not up in the, the thick and in the cover, you know. And so with a frog, right. the sun is kind of your friend. It can be. Positions it, where it you really can attack can be, with sure. a frog and not much else at times. And you know, a year and a half ago, you and I shot a video at Lake Palestine. There wasn't a cloud in America that day. No. And we caught 20 or 30 fish on a frog. That's right. That's it right. was a Absolutely. great time, man. Yeah, I, I love the fall frog bite. And one of the reasons why is because I think a lot of people overlook it. You know, sure. we all hear about frogs in the spring and even right. in the summer. No, you're right. You're but right. the fall deal, the frog's not really a fall staple. But it sure. is for me. And the reason is, is because I think what, what happens is people are not, they're thinking frog and they're not thinking bait fish. Right. And that frog is nothing but a bait fish, yeah. dude. They don't, they, hey, look, Jack, these freaking fish don't know, son. No, they ain't that smart, They ain't bro. that smart. <laughs> no, they ain't that smart. And yeah, and you're right. And you see it in the fall all the time. You see the bait fish kind of run down the edge of the grass line. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, what do you, I mean, that's exactly the best thing to replicate that is a frog bait fish running on the edge of flooded grass. So it's a great time to use it. I encourage all you guys, if you've never thrown a frog in the fall, please do get out. Use some of these tips Ronnie talked about. Those are cheese he's talking about. That's a great way to go. Yeah, man. It. I mean, it's, you know. Make that, give that frog some erratic action. Watch your bait fish. Watch how they spook when something's busting after you. That's the deal. That's the only thing that I do. I watch nature. I see what the bait does. I see what the bluegill doing. And I try to get my baits to mimic it. And those bass, man, they're just not smart enough. That's they a, can't handle it. That's a classic example of what you just said of what, you know, when people ask me, what can I do to be a better fisherman? The first thing I always tell them is you got to pay more attention to every little detail that goes that's on right. around you. That's right. And that's a classic example. Yeah. Noticing how the bait fish are running away from the predator yep. fish and then trying to imitate that is a perfect example. Yep. You know, we were talking about crawfish this morning. I'll throw a, a, a brown color. It's called red. I call it old red. Oh, but, red. I mean, you start seeing the crawfish and you start hearing them in the grass. You'll start hearing clicking. And, man, that's one of my favorite times to pull my frog yeah, out. absolutely. You know, one thing we didn't touch on up there on the hook set, you know, there's a lot of debate out there. Do you wait? Do you not wait? What, what's your theory on hook sets and frog bites? So here's kind of my deal is, I, you know, I'm going to throw my frog out there. I'm going to twist, twist, twist. The deal is my rod's already at the water. It's already all the way down. So I've got to, before I can even set the hook, I've got to reel in the slack and I've got to set the hook. To me, I'm not really a big waiter. I'm not like a let him bite the frog and me kind of ease in on it. Because what's going to happen, he's going to bite it and there's nothing there and they're going to spit it. You know, it's kind of like throwing a big giant jig sometimes you know yeah. it's like by the time they've picked it up and dropped it and you've set the hook it's too late dude and so yeah. you know I, I don't want anybody to, to set the hook too early but man when they're eating it dude you kind of almost can't because you got to take that you got to reel in your slack and you got to go from all the way up the water all the way up here mm -hmm. you know and so 
I, I kind of think most of us have a little bit of a natural tendency for the reaction time to let the frog. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's out. any reason to purposefully wait Man. at all. I, I, I'm a guy that when they blow up, and, and I like to, when I can be sharp enough, I like to try and watch my braid on the top of the water. Sure. And if that braid even wiggles, buddy, I'm... Which it always does. And the know? other thing is, you got to take a step back, man. You're throwing these big baits, these bigger rods, and you're, you're making long casts, yeah. and you, you take that your your right foot and you step back, and by the time all that's transpired, dude, You've that fish has enough. got it, man. You've waited enough, right? I agree 100%. Yep. I agree. I'm not a, you should count to whatever. Nah. No. Dude, these, they don't have time to, you know, when they blow up on bait, that bait's trying to get away, dude. That's the deal, is, is they're eating natural bait that's doing everything that it can to survive. I don't, to me, in my opinion, if you swing on a frogfish and miss him, he wasn't ever gonna have that he, frog. He didn't. He didn't have the frog. He wasn't gonna he have didn't that have frog. A frog. And he wasn't ever gonna get it. He wasn't gonna get it. Right. And I'm not saying that they won't. But my deal is, if I jerk that that frog completely away from the bass, and I make a cast back in there, and it's soft and it's subtle, and I let it sit, and, let there, and I pop that sucker, dude. He's probably gonna choke on it. You're right. At that time, he's gonna really get it because he missed the glass. There went one blown up behind us. Oh lord. Well, listen, we better wrap this up. Me and Ronnie Kelly gonna do a little bit more fishing today. Hope y'all enjoyed the guys' network today. Uh, we sure appreciate you guys watching. If you're looking for any products from Six Cents Fishing, including the rods that I use, some of the hard baits I use, be sure you punch in that code. Your Lake Fork Guide get a 10% discount on all orders. It's Six Cents Fishing. Let us know what you thought of Mr. R. Kelly. Fill it on your booty down in the I comments. Feel it on your booty. That's, that's it. Hey, dude, thanks for having me on, bro. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, wait. Well, there we go. Did it one more time. Hey, man, uh, thanks for having me on, of bro. Of course. <laughs> Hashtag bump fill. Drop that in the comments, and we'll see you next time right here. Your Lake Fort Gallery.